this is the continuation of our uh, review session for exam one, which would cover chapter one and two. And I, in last segments of review session, we talked about naming of compounds, writing of formulas, but I didn't have chance to go over these particular types of names. So I'm going to write down a formula, and based on that formula, first thing is you have to predict whether the formula is right or wrong. So let me first write down this, com this compound and you tell me whether this is right or wrong. NiPO3. If it is right, then you need to name this compound. If it's wrong, you need to fix, fix it and then write down name of this compound. So nickel and then I have PO3. If you look at the list of acids that I have given you, and that has been posted, you find there is an acid which has the formula of HPO3. So in this kind of compounds, where you have a, you have a portion of this compound coming from an acid, it's a good idea to go back to the acid. And this is called phosphorus acid. I want you to know these names, all these name, names of acids that I have given you on that list, list of acids. H3PO3 is phosphorus acid. I'm sorry, I forgot to write down three here. It should be H3PO3, that's phosphorus acid. H3PO4 is phosphoric acid. Now, in order to get PO3, you have to get rid of three hydrogens. So that's how you get PO3. Each time you get rid of hydrogen, you get a negative number. So if I get rid of three hydrogens, I get negative three. This is called phosphite ion. So anything that comes from OUS acid would have ending ITE. Okay, so we know two things from here. So PO3, first thing I know that has negative number, which is negative 3. And obviously nickel is from, is from transition elements, so it can have plus 2 or plus 3. So if nickel is plus 3, and this is minus 3, we already know from the acid. Now this 3 goes down here, and this 3 goes down here, so you basically get Ni3, PO3, Three, and in most cases you get the smallest ratio, which is one and one, NiPO3. So this is fine, and this is called nickel phosphide. So nickel phosphide. So don't get confused between phosphite and phosphate. In order to get phosphate, you'd have this formula, NiPO4. This is coming from phosphoric acid, IC acid, by getting rid of three hydrogens. So basically, this is phosphoric acid. By getting rid of three hydrogens, you get PO4, three minus. And this is called phosphate ion. ATE. So, this compound is going to be nickel phosphate. Now, one more thing I need to tell you that whenever you have a transition metal like nickel, iron, cobalt, they usually have more than one positive numbers. At the beginning, I say nickel could be plus two or plus three. So, you must write down in parentheses what kind of nickel you had. So in parentheses, you should write down nickel 3. Okay, it should be side by side. I don't have much space there. So let's write down again. Nickel 3 phosphite, I-T-E. And this is going to be nickel 3 phosphate. Okay, make sure you know this kind of names and formulas. 
Now I'm going to give you another example. formula or wrong formula? If it's the right formula, then write down the name of this compound. If it's the wrong formula, then first fix the formula and then write down uh, the name of this compound. Again, look at the end part of this compound, ClO4. Think about an acid that has ClO4. If you look at the list of acids, you find this as the acid. And the name of this compound is perchloric acid. I gave you a series of this kind of acids, HClO, HClO2, HClO3, HClO4. HClO is, or HOCl, both we can write down, is hypochlorous acid, then chlorous acid, chloric acid, perchloric acid. Each time you add oxygen, that's how you change the name from hypochlorous, chlorous, chloric, perchloric. So this is the per perchloric acid. When you get rid of hydrogen to get ClO4, since I got rid of one hydrogen from here, so Cl4 would have minus one. So I don't need to memorize this once I know these acids. I can get these charges. Now let's come over here, and I now know that ClO4 is minus one because I got rid of one hydrogen from the acid Calcium, I can get the charge on calcium by looking at periodic table. It comes from group 2A. Group 1A gets plus 1, group 2A plus 2, 3A gets plus 3, and beyond 4, you subtract the group number from 8. So I'd like, if something belongs to group 5, it would have minus 3, 6 would have minus 2, 7 would have minus 1. So this is from group 2A. So this gets plus 2. And the formula for this compound would be, these two goes down here, this comes down here. Now forget about this positive and negative. So I get Ca, then put down here 1, which don't, we don't normally write down 1, but I'm just writing down it for the time being. And this two goes down to the bottom of uh, the negative charge. So now this is 2. You can delete this one, because if there is nothing written here, that means it's one. So, my formula, original formula was wrong. This is the right formula. CaCl 4 2 Now, I need to name this compound. This was IC acid, perchloric acid. Anything I get from IC acid would have AT ending. So, this would be perchlorate ion, ATE. So, name of this compound is calcium perchlorate. You don't need to say calcium 2 because all calcium would, have, would be plus 2. It's not like transition elements where it could be plus 2, plus 3, and sometimes plus 1 and plus 2. So, this is redundant to write down in parentheses 2. So, the name of this compound is calcium perchlorate. So, make sure you try doing similar problems by looking at those acids and getting rid of hydrogens, which creates a negative charge. I would also like you to know some of the organic compounds. And so let me now go over organic names of organic compounds and their formulas. Organic compounds, I would like you to know the names and formula of methane all the way to decane. Now let me explain to you what, how we can build this kind of molecules. Methane has only one carbon. And if it's a neutral compound, carbon must have four bonds. So this carbon would have four bonds and rest are hydrogens. So that's methane. Ethane would have two carbons, so that's ethane. 
two carbon. And again, each carbon must have four bonds. So let's make four bonds around each carbon. So that's ethane. The next one is propane. Propane would have three carbon. You add one more carbon. And then make sure each carbon has four bonds. Rest would be hydrogens. So I already have one bond here, so I must have three other bonds with hydrogens. So that gives four bonds around carbon. These are called alkanes. There is no double bond. And in exam, I'd be only asking you names of alkanes. Uh, the third one is propane. Fourth one is butane. So in the same way, you can get butane, pentane. After butane, names are be much more straightforward because penta means five. So that means there are five carbon. Hexa, afterward this hexa. Hexa means six. Hexane. So hexane means this has six carbon and rest hydrogens. Then heptane. Hepta means seven. Then octane. Octane means there would be eight carbon. No name, nine carbon. And decane, ten carbon. I would like you to know these names and formulas for the exam and there will be a question on organic compounds. The next problem again is related to formula. In my study guide I gave you some of these uh, examples but I am here explaining to you how to come up with the right answers. Now say I have an unknown element X. This is an unknown element. With barium BA, it gives you BA X. So that unknown element makes a compound of this formula, BA X. Now the question is, if I make this compound with sodium, would that formula be still in a X 1 and 1? This is 1 and 1. Let me show you how to find out this answer. When you say BAX, this has to be plus 2. Let me write down separate dates so not to make it messy. So BA is plus 2 because it's from group 2A. It's a good idea to have a periodic table in front of you as well as the data sheet that I have uh, uploaded to ANGEL. So BA2 plus and X has to be 2 minus. Now how do I know that? First I'm saying this is the right formula for this compound. And this is a neutral compound. So if this is plus 2, the other one has to be minus 2. Plus 2 minus 2 makes a neutral. 2 minus 2, that's 0. And next, if I have this, then this goes down here. This goes here. So BA2X2 is same as BAX. So what we found out here is X carries negative 2. Once you know that X carries negative 2, then let's come to this compound. Sodium is from group 1A. So it would be, it would have plus 1. We already found out that new, new element X has minus 2. So the new formula is going to be this. Na2X. So my formula in X was wrong. So the right formula is Na2X. So you'd expect a question like this where I'd give you an unknown element with a formula and based on that you'd be able to predict formula of a new compound. The next question would be on density calculation. Since this is the first exam, there will be lots of questions on names of compounds and writing of formulas. So make sure to save your time just know those list of acids and their formulas and names and make sure you know that OUS acid gives ITE ending when it, they make compound and IC acid gives ATE ending. Now I picked this problem from the book. So this is density calculation. Now this is chapter 1, number 28, and uh, this is uh, edition 12, 
Brown, LeMay, and Barston group. In this problem, density is given, which is 4.51 gram per centimeter cubed. So that's the density. And what they're saying is that object, say for example, this is the object, the density of which is 4.51 gram per cubic centimeter. Now, what they're saying is when you put it in water or any liquid, it displaces 125 ml of water. So in case of water, it displaces 125 0 ml water. Rather than saying that volume is 125 ml, is saying that it displaces 125 ml of water. That's basically saying that the volume of this substance is 125 ml. Because whatever is the volume of the object, it has to take that volume and it is going to displace that much water. So, so the volume from this information, we find that volume is 125.0 ml. And now I need to do the calculation. What we need to get is the mass. So the question is, what is the mass of this sample? So mass is given by volume times density. Make sure you have the right units, otherwise you can't uh, work on this problem. Now, I need to tell you that one centimeter cubed is also called one cc, which is same as one ml. Quite often we forget about this. Uh, so it's the same thing, centimeter cubed is cc, and which is ml. So now let's multiply them and see whether everything is in right unit. Volume is 125 ml, so it's 125.0 ml, times the density is 4.51 gram per centimeter cube. Rather than writing down centimeter cubed, I'd write down ml, because that way I can cancel out the units, ml and ml, and my final unit should be gram, and it is gram. So this is how, then you can, you can do the math and get the final answer. So this is how you do the density calculation, but make sure whenever you do a calculation like these, your units are consistent. Like for example, volume, if it's ml, you must have ml here or cubic centimeter here. If not, you need to change the unit so that you get the right unit. So this is the conclusion of my review session one for exam one.